What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures and this guy is Brad with GoExploreUSA.com and we're in the Washtenaw National Forest right now um, because if you watched my Kentucky, the, the videos we did back in the, uh, the fall in Kentucky, um, that was Brad's kind of official launch of his new company, Go Explore USA. And this is his first official trip for Go Explore USA. So we're in the Washtenaw National Forest and Brad's gonna lead us along yep. and we're gonna have a good time. We got the whole weekend. Uh, we've got quite a few guys here. There's eight rigs total, uh, but we have, uh, let's see, we've got Brad's Tacoma. We got Jeff's Tacoma. What year is your Tacoma? 89. 89. 89. Uh, we've got 2020. a Land Rover Defender. We have a real Defender um, in front of it. And then we've got two XJs. They drove 900 miles from Indiana just to come on this trip. And then we've got a Ford Raptor. He's from Mississippi. Um, but it's going to be an incredible day. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have fun. We're out of here. Take care. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo. Artemis Overland Hardware. They have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets music festival. Shop Overland Apparel, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Open Road Four Wheel Drive, makers of affordable, high quality winches and recovery gear. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for overland adventure trailers. And Moon, makers of the Moonshade portable awning. Well, we've hit our first snag. When Brad pre-routed this a few weeks ago, this gate was open. And this is not a seasonal trail, so it should be open year round. But, yay for service. And Brad uh, got this route fully approved by the Forest Service, so they knew that this was happening this weekend. Um, but, what do we do, Brad? We go around. We adapt. We plant. We just adapt. Go, go back right there, and then just hit right here. Piece of cake. See if there's a see if there's a gate there. Yep. And if not, That's we'll a... have to go back to the pavement, I guess, and go I mean, from there. We can have go to, south there to, too. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh yeah, there's another way too. So, so. we adapt. We improvise. Well, we overcome. Authentic Overland Adventures. This is it. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's always an adventure. <laughs> well, that's the worst thing that happens. Uh, we're going to have a good day. But it's just part Pass of the dozer. We're having a, a fun little time right now. That's where our gate was. So we came back this way. And I mean, according to the map, um, that connects to it and then we can get back over there. But I just went up that little trail there and it was all overgrown and kind of didn't exist anymore. So we're having to reroute some more, come down here and then take this road and reconnect back to where we want to be. So, but that's okay. I mean, I mean, that's part of it. That's, uh, I mean, a few weeks ago when Brad was pre-running this, that gate was open. Uh, now the gate's closed for some unknown reason. And so we're having to reroute and replan. That's where you know, tools like Gaia GPS with the motor vehicle use map or the MBUM overlay, um, you know, are invaluable for for something like this. So it, it makes being able to, um, you know, pivot and make adjustments when you encounter some random closed gate like that uh, pretty easy. So there you go. If you haven't tried Gaia GPS, um, there's a there's a link in the description for 25 percent off your first year of guy premium and yes the premium is absolutely worth it all right 
right, so we're backtracking again. We're gonna pop back down on the highway and there's two other possible connectors to our route, at least two close ones, this one and this one. This trail, this 51, uh, 54, 170, it is seasonal and it is not open yet. So we can't try to connect it yet. Um, so we're gonna see what happens. All right, good news, we have made it back to the original trail. Um, Brad actually took this route just to test it. I decided to take this option just to, you know, just to scout. So we are back on the original planned route. And that didn't take us too, too long to figure it out. Well, we found this uh, new spot. It's just off the highway on the route here, real close to Mina, called Thibodeau's Country Store. And they have some pretty killer Cajun cooking going on in there. This is where we're stopping for lunch. But, but I got some fresh cracklings, some blueberry cobbler, some boudin balls, which I've already tried, and it's delicious, and a boudin egg roll, which I'm excited about. That trail was a lot of fun. You don't see many trails like that in the Washita National Forest. So that was a good one. But we are back on the main dirt road and heading to a couple scenic spots, an overlook and then a waterfall. And then we're gonna go find camp. So it's been a good day. Everybody's been having a blast. Fun fact, Carl in the Raptor never done anything like this before. I don't think his Raptor's ever been off-road before. And so he definitely never, this, last night was his first time camping. So I'm um, super pumped to be hanging out with him, taking new people out that have never done this before. And just seeing the excitement in their face and just getting to watch them experience uh, this type of activity for the first time is so much fun. I love it.
Oh wow, it's gorgeous in here though. Is that it? Is that it? Oh. Well, there's the waterfall. Um, there is water dripping. I, I do. Yep. Let me get a let me get a close up of the water falling. It's beautiful. This little thing is beautiful. Golly. You just you just passed the waterfall. Oh, oh it was ginormous. <laughs> Let me wash my hair. No. <laughs> Be in the close. I am. Now we established in Kentucky this was Appalachian. Uh -huh. Appalachian mole rat. Appalachian mole rat. But it is a sweet one. I love finding areas like this they're just gorgeous the the bluff lines on this side i mean if there was another 12 inches of water flowing through here this would be just unreal i mean it's gorgeous right now and the water feels really good on my feet i love this spot a lot All right, well, we have found camp, and it is epic. Um, it, is, it is massive, and it is right here on the water. Um, I mean, there's not a whole lot of water, but what there is is very cold. Feels amazing. There are some deeper spots, not quite waist deep over there if you want to. You know, maybe take a little a little stream bath. But absolutely gorgeous. Um, we've got some trash to clean up from the previous humans that were here. But that's not unusual. It's not horrible. So I'm crazy pumped. I think this is going to be an awesome night. And I'm excited. So Brad... Uh, Brad did a killer job finding this one because I've never been this far west before in the Washita's. Um, so Brad did good on this one. All right, Danielle has yeah. got uh, dinner duties. What we got for dinner? We're gonna have steak fajitas. We got some meat marinated Ooh. here and veggies and some other fun stuff over there. It's off. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to. Thought I'd give you a quick walk around of the rigs that we have here, because um, some of them are just really sweet. Um, both of these XJs uh, built to be rock crawlers, but they have since uh, kind of gotten bored with the rock crawling, and now want to get into overlanding and more, you know, long-term adventure-based travel but they still want to be super capable to hit any obstacle that uh, comes their way much like my philosophy with the gladiator uh, so we've got the the two xj's uh, this one has the inline six uh, i'm not sure what he's got under it for axles anti-rocks um, coil over not coil overs uh, bypass fox shocks 23 zero walk about 62 tent uh, the exo cage it's a uh, pretty handy when your exo cage doubles as your, um, your your roof rack for your tent that's uh it comes in real handy and then this one actually has an ls v8 engine under the hood uh, hence the the custom hood bulge there and um, this thing's on i know it's on on tons uh, he has 40s at home, but these are his, his smaller, um, I guess, overlanding tires. Uh, lots of custom work on it, but he's got the, the Rome Adventure Company 
rooftop tent on top of it. As you can see, it is very new. This is this is really their maiden voyage uh, with this setup in this tent. And I mean, they're, they're loving it. They're having a blast. Then of course we got Brad's uh, Tacoma, double cab, long bed. Um, it is quite long with the CVT tent on the back. This is Danielle's Land Rover Discovery. Man, such a cool rig. Um, she absolutely loves this thing. And custom shelves in the back, storage areas. So this is Bryce's new Defender 110. Got the factory snorkel option on it. It's been cool to see him wield this today because it when needed, much like the Grand Cherokee that we used to have, he can push a button inside and raise the lift on it, which is uh, pretty handy. You know, for mild stuff that we've been doing like this, it's, it's done really well today. Then they've got the iCamper uh, 3.0, the new one. I do like the I do like the black and gray look of the new iCampers, but they are very happy with the new iCamper. He's got an ARB fridge in the back, but it's, this is my first time to actually see and wheel with one of these in person, and it's done really well today. And then Carl with the Raptor that's been behind me all day, he's sleeping in a ground tent because this whole overlanding thing is brand new to him. Um, he has never done anything like this before. And I just think and he's having such a good time. He is loving this experience, but he's just, he's rocking the little Ozark Trail ground tent. And then Jeff has his Tacoma with the roof nest on top. Um, he's been doing great. He's been working on this Tacoma for a little while. It's got the uh, the bumpers and the skids and the rack. Um, he's he's put some work into this and it's been doing really well. And then of course my Gladiator. And at some point tonight, Nathan is going to come rolling into camp and he'll be with us all day tomorrow and Sunday in his uh, in his new Wrangler. <laughs> Carl, right, how'd you sleep? Hey, I slept good. Uh, until about, I don't know, four o'clock and my body clock woke me up. Oh no. Uh, but a little hard, my air mattress leaked a little bit of air. But that right there, is just like a sound machine. Pretty amazing, isn't it? It really is. But, uh, yeah, you had a good spot next to that one. I, I really did, I'm glad I moved. <laughs> it's uh, great. Though. It's about 7.30. Um, I think everybody's up at this point. And we've got a uh, we've got a full day today. Um, Brad wants to to try to get from here, which is the west side of the Washita National Forest, and potentially get all the way to the east side, um, which is a lot of miles. So we'll we'll see if we get there or not. I kind of don't think we will, um, but we'll see. I know he's got a lot of scenic stops along the way, some more waterfalls, some overlooks, um, and that sort of thing. So. Well, we'll just see how today goes. That's the great thing about these trips. You know, you, you have, you know, you, you have goals of where you want to be, but then there's flexibility for where you actually end up. And uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. It should be a really fun day today. Nathan is back with us. He got here a little after nine last night. Good morning. I guess... Man, we haven't seen you, at least in a video, since Big Iron. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while. It's been way too long. Yeah, I missed out on the Colorado trip and everything. I know. How's the how's the GFC working out for you? Pretty good. Are you liking it? Super easy to set up. Comfortable inside. Lots of airflow. Yeah, I'm loving it. 
it looks good on the on the Jeep. We stopped at uh, a potential waterfall that is not flowing right now. It's uh, that right there, Blaylock Creek Falls. This is Blaylock Creek, but killer campsite here. Dang, and pretty stellar swimming hole here too. I think someone's rigged up a rope swing from there. Don't think it's deep enough for the rope swing, but. I got to remember this is a camping spot to come just chill. That bluff line is gorgeous. All that moss and the ferns. Making a quick stop at Little Missouri Falls. Oakley and I were here a few months ago at the beginning of the summer. Always a really special place. The beautiful waterfall that I think is flowing fairly okay today. Not horrible. But we got quite a few people who've never been here before, so it'll be great for them. <laughs> We had just a great relaxing time there at the waterfalls and by the time we got back up to the vehicles it was lunchtime so we made sandwiches and just hung out and talked. Now we are back on the road and we've got a little ways of just graded dirt and some pavement to get to the eastern side of the Washita's. But that's the plan. We're gonna just put the hammer down and uh, cover some ground here for a little bit and then get to a different area and see some more amazing things there. After about 30, 40 miles on the highway, right turn. We are back on dirt, or, or gravel anyway. Well, this road is horribly dusty. Uh, the people in the back are struggling big time with visibility.
quite the view up here. Good job, Brad. That's Lake Washita in the distance. Uh, man, quite the view. Well, that was a very nice overlook. Beautiful view of Lake Washita in the distance. It is now four o'clock, so we very much have camp on our mind. We've got a couple spots picked out uh, a little further east of here. So the plan is just to, uh, I mean, as best as the dust will allow us, book it down the main roads and get to camp. All right, here's a helpful tip for you. If you're gonna go on a group trip like this, whether it's you know, a trip like this with Brad or another guide type of group or on your own with friends, um, a couple things that really help. First, get a high, get as high a wattage of a radio as you can. Because we've got nine rigs today, and with the dust like this, we're pretty spread out. Uh, because otherwise it's very dangerous to be right up on the rig in front of you when you can't see them because of the dust and it's the dust is that bad um, but we've got a couple guys that only have handhelds so when they're in the back it it makes it very hard to to hear when you've only got a, a low wattage radio and you're wheeling in dense forest like this those radios don't travel very far so um, I am now in the middle of the pack because we're just booking it down the dirt roads. I've got the route and I've got the highest wattage radio in the group with my Midland MXT575. So everybody can hear me when I talk, but not everybody can hear each other when they're talking. So, that, I, so I'm in the, in the middle now so I can relay communications. Highly recommend the 50 watt Midlands either the MXT500 or the MXT575. Uh, there's a link in the description below and a code where you can save like 10% for Midland. Also, amber chase lights really help with the visibility for the people behind you in dust. So I'm also one of the few that have amber chase lights. So I'm booking it pretty fast on this road and the people behind me can at least see my, my bright ambers on the back of my Gladiator. Which, uh, which is super helpful and a lot safer that way. This is horrible. I mean, this is just horrible. Now we've had rain and dust, which is a great combo. You're kind of a blind spot there. Watch for the blind spot. All right, well, we made it to camp. It's just 5.30. We're pretty much set up. Uh, got my tin up. I'm using my moonshade tonight because it has rained on us today and there's a chance of rain tonight. Um, Nathan is also using his moonshade um, for the same reason. And Jeff is using his moonshade. And he just pulled it pulled it down. He just he just pulled it off. Yeah. <laughs> so so we got three moonshades. Soon to be four. Soon to be four. <laughs> All right, everyone's uh, pretty much set up, but this is such a cool spot because look at that. That is, that, that's what we call the cave. It's not, it's not really a cave. Um, you can't go back into it, but it is, it is recessed in there. And as you can see, that's where everybody who camps here builds their campfires. And it's uh, really more of a bluff line than a cave so maybe we need to change the name of this to the bluff line camp but it's uh just pretty darn cool danielle's already at work making chili for us tonight oh god it's gonna be so good make some cornbread. you're pretty awesome and she's gonna make cornbread we're getting <laughs> cornbread in the dutch oven and then later it's gonna be a cookie a dutch oven cookie so super pumped about dinner about camp uh, about uh, about this whole situation it's gonna be great well said there was a chance of rain real glad we got these moonshades up works really well perfect for the snack pan yeah we got the oh. we got the food protected that's what matters yeah <laughs> although the snacks are almost gone Danielle is protecting the cornbread from the rain. 
<laughs> that is, that's serious. She is awesome. It's nice and dry under here. Second bowl, we're gonna eat your yeah. Fritos. I mean, uh, <laughs> you for your Fritos. <laughs> All right, Danielle's made us a skillet cookie in the Dutch oven. Look at that. That looks awesome, Danielle. Good morning. These people are up way too early. Like someone set an alarm for 645. We're camping. I know, I think it was Brad. And they gotta get up, they gotta make breakfast for the group and all that sort of stuff, so I get it. But not everybody else has to get up. I'm pretty sure I'm the last one up. I'm not getting up yet. I, I refuse. All right, I'm up. I'm up. I'm the last one up. That's okay. So do know that you know if you come on a trip like this there is a schedule you know that you, you, you there is a schedule for the trip um, it does have a beginning it does have an end and you gotta get to where you're going and the campsites and that sort of thing um, so don't don't think you're gonna sleep in and I mean it's it's 7 30 it's it's a reasonable time to be up I was just sleeping really good this morning, so I'm not I'm not bitter. Brad, vehicle reset. Was that your alarm at 6:45 this morning that I heard? It was my alarm. It was the coffee alarm. <laughs> I told you it was his alarm because he has to get up and and do things. That looks amazing. Yeah. That's a lot of food, y'all. <laughs> You better be hungry today. <laughs> it all started, uh, I told you, I was kind of a land cruiser guy. We've had land cruisers. You, you gave right. me your sympathies. Right. Uh, <laughs> and they're, they're great. <laughs> they are. And my wife has an 80 series, so I went to YouTube, started watching uh, videos on the 80 series, which led to a gentleman in Colorado that had 80 series. Um, and uh, I watched his, and he went on a couple of weekend adventures. Then I started looking at other Colorado adventures, and I happened to see one that said Ozark. Overland Adventure. So I clicked on it and it was you. Uh, and I said, well, you know what? The Ozarks are a lot closer than uh, Colorado to Mississippi. <laughs> so I said, uh, I said, well, I'm gonna start watching him. So I did and uh, I got addicted to it. The biggest thing is, is my wife got addicted to watching it as well. And she's not a big outdoorsy person, but she enjoyed watching it. And she almost, it, it was like watching characters in a show. Um, uh, Robert, by the way, uh, you're, you're, you're her favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just informative and, and I started I've always had this urge I grew up with woods behind my house uh, so we built forts and tree houses and, and you know we camped out and had fun like that so I've always had that urge to, to do stuff and we camped some but anyway uh, that led to a video of yours that Brad was in mm -hmm. Overland Adventures I saw the Kentucky trip that's correct the cat and uh, I saw his his hat which said Ole Miss I'm a graduate of Ole Miss so I said you know I'm gonna try to contact this I meant guy. he was a good guy yeah yeah that's right <laughs> of course <laughs> and uh, uh, so I said I'm gonna contact this guy and see what it's all about what he's got going on so I did and uh, this has been a week ago all this transpired in a week this has been a week yeah just a week that's crazy yeah one <laughs> week uh, and I told my wife I'd been griping about not not having any adventure I've been I've, the last 26 years years I've been growing a business uh, keeping it through COVID uh, raising a family for the last 26 years and all my kids have gotten grown and have done wonderful for themselves so uh, I said I, I gotta do something and she said well do it and quit talking about it and uh, I did uh, I spent less than a hundred bucks at Walmart for a $30 tent so I was the only tent camper here it's been an experience it's been great um, uh, you've been great as far as your videos and training the basic stuff that you do things that I picked up on and here we are and it's been a blast are you hooked? Uh, 
Yes. I, you know, I don't know how much time I have, but I am. What we have done the last two or three days, yeah. uh, of course, my vehicle is not geared like you guys have, uh, but uh, I think it's held its own pretty much. It's, it, I mean, from what we've done, it's probably been the best vehicle out here. <laughs> oh, thanks. I appreciate that. So it, it, it's, uh, yes, I am hooked. It's been wonderful. Thanks to everybody. Brad's oh, been awesome. We're so glad you got to come. Yeah, and Brad's been awful. awful uh, oh, Brad's fantastic. Gracious. And, and, and Danielle has been a wonderful person to cook. She's done all oh, the yeah. cooking. And, and she's been a great caboose on the train as we've gone yep. through. So, But uh, thank you guys for well, everything. I mean, you have proven you can do this with a $30 ground tent from Walmart. Yes. And have a blast. $6 so. can of Scotch Guard. There you we go. did rain last night. <laughs> <laughs> we are starting our morning from camp hiking a little short hike to a waterfall that I've been close to it before, but I've never actually been to this one. Then after we do this, we're going to a couple more overlooks and the plan is to be, to be done by noon so everybody can start the journey home. Wow. Too bad our, our little rainstorm last night didn't fill this up more. Wow, this would be gorgeous. Well, it is gorgeous. But I just imagine all the water flowing down it. So uh, we were always rock crawlers and always trailered our thing, our Jeeps everywhere we went and uh, kind of got expensive. So we decided that we would uh, start daily driving them. And then, uh, you know, we still went rock crawling and then we decided that we wanted to see more of the world instead of just flat Indiana and uh, started looking at overlanding and found Ozark Overlanding Adventures and um, saw the KAT video and at the beginning and end of it I saw Brad and his Go Explore USA and looked it up and saw the trip and I was like well let's book that I think it was back in February something yeah, like that February. and we're like well let's spend the money and then we just you gotta go then you just you gotta go you don't want to waste the money so drove 980 miles mm -hmm. to Wachita National Forest, and here we are, and had a blast, and it's just been a good time. We appreciate everything. So you gonna do it again? Yes, yeah. definitely. As soon as the definitely. we were gonna see the Ozarks. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Ozark. Ozarks is the next, and yeah, told Brad as soon as he posts that, let us know so we can yeah. come see everybody again. That'd be nice to catch up too. And then same thing with the KAT. He wants to do KAT again. Yeah, we want to so. finish that. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. we'd love to be there for that. Awesome. I mean, I'm glad you guys have had such a good time. Yeah, it's been Better amazing. Blast. Yeah, Way different than flat cornfields. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely loved it. Big change of pace from going over rocks slowly to actually getting out and opening up the Jeep and getting to see views you can't see anywhere else. Yeah. So it's it's been a blast. Worth every mile. Time to make a quarter mile hike uphill uh, up to Flatside Pinnacle. This is arguably one of the best views in the Washtenaw National Forest. So we'll, we'll see.
we made it to the top not a very long hike but god the view up here is incredible kind of deep Yeah. If you had a snake in your hand, that'd be really good. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well that was a lot of fun. The view from up there is awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll see which view you think is the better view. Flat Side Pinnacle or where we're going now, which is Crystal Mountain. Both are spectacular. I think Flat Side ha has a much better view of trees, and in the fall, the stellar. Uh, Crystal Mountain, you get a view of Lake Winona below. Um, uh, they're both really cool places. They're only like 10 miles apart, so it doesn't take very long to get from one to the other. Here's Crystal Mountain. Uh, what do you think? Which view is better, this one or Fork Mountain? What do you think? I think the last one. I think Fork Mountain too. Yeah. Lake Winona is beautiful, but uh, I like the, the other view better. I'm on rolling hill. So this is called Crystal Mountain for a reason because there are giant uh, quartz crystal deposits up here. And that's uh, one of the largest ones I've seen. Yeah, that's a nice one. Here's a little secret spot to hang hammocks. With a pretty stellar view too. Alright, well we are going to uh, unfortunately have to end the trip here. From here we're getting to pavement and airing up. And then everybody's going to go their separate ways home. Some people have a lot farther to go than others um, so they want to get a get at least a start home but we hope you have enjoyed this uh, video as much as we have enjoyed this trip if you are interested in checking out something like this if you're maybe new to this overlanding thing or new to camping and you know want to give it a shot go check out go explore USA dot com links in the description and take a look at some of the future trips brad's got there's going to be trips in the ozarks there's going to be more trips to the washita's there's trips uh outside of arkansas it, planned in the future so be sure and check that out and be sure and sign up y'all y'all recommend this yes. Yes. all right so thanks so much for watching be sure to like subscribe check out our patreon um check out uh shop for both mine and Nathan's. And Brad's. And Brad's. Yeah. Uh, all three of our merch is, is on there. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Bye.